But there's something quite weird about coming towards the end of a long trip. Once you settle into long distance travel, and especially with cycling, it can feel like it will last forever. But we were now looking at a very real deadline of only weeks away to catch a flight from Athens back to Glasgow. But after a short time in Greece, we were loving it so much and had a growing list of places that we really wanted to explore just on the mainland, never mind the islands. It was also so important for us to take a bit of time to probably rest up and get as rude a tan as possible. So that meant decisions on what we could actually squeeze in were quickly made. Lily found an amazing Airbnb on the east coast on the peninsula of Pelion, where we'd stay for about a week, then cycle the rest of the way to Athens. It felt like a solid plan. Having this destination let us work out where we could check out along the way, and we absolutely had to go to Meteora. Getting here was quite a tough cycle of rolling hills and small valleys with steep ascents, but we made pretty good progress, and as always, having lots of dogs around you definitely helps. Definitely a difficult day, but really rewarding in terms of the views and the scenery. One thing I haven't mentioned much about though was the incessant tiny flies that have been plaguing us in this area, as well as some bad stretches in Bulgaria. I think in Romania a little bit too, but particularly here and Bulgaria. It can be pretty hellish if you're going uphill. They sort of hover around your face and then fly directly into your eyes. It is not fun and on this day it was particularly bad. I've got no idea what these flies are and why they love I juice so much, but I know that I hate them. Luckily though, when you start going downhill, they tend to bugger off and what a downhill we had. The day's push to get here was totally worth it as we cruised towards Meteora as the sun started to set. Now, I'd never heard of Meteora before and I can't remember why we decided to head towards it. It was probably on some list of popular tourist sites in the mainland Greece to see and we were probably like, what the hell is this place? But what a place, it's simply spectacular. If you're looking for a serious, informative video about Meteora, then you should know by now that this is not the place for it. However, I do have a few nuggets of information that I've retained, mainly that the rock formations were apparently created when part of the east coast collapsed and the whole area, which was previously underwater, suddenly became exposed, creating these weird pinnacles. So they say. Someone was then like, what a perfect place to build some monasteries. The other thing I vaguely remember was that the Italians were getting right in amongst it during the Second World War, I think, and the priests were having none of it. Lastly, it was also a Bond set, so if you're into James Bond, then, well, here we are. It was pretty easy to find the campsite, there's tons around this area and we booked two nights here so that we'd have a day to explore. It was kind of weird to be back in a more traditional Western Europe style campsite with shower blocks, kitchen areas and all that stuff. Although the big difference is I believe there are actually toilet seats here unlike in France because French people absolutely hate toilet seats and toilet paper in campsites. There was also a climbing festival going on which made it weirdly busy with very skinny fit people Ironically, this year we got mad into climbing and bouldering and I'm sure that we would have been so pumped to have just happened upon a festival all about it if we were there now. But I reckon us seeing the festival then in 2018 planted some seeds of interest for us anyway. We opted to take the bus to the top then see how many monasteries we could fit in as we basically walked our way back down over the course of the day. Although the primary mission was obviously to make sure that we got the best sticker possible, which we saw pretty quickly completing our master sticker set for all the countries that we visited over the six months of the trip. I'm usually not a massive fan of more touristy stuff and visiting things in this way, but it wasn't really that expensive and the views were amazing. It was busy, yeah, and there were some pretty hardcore tourist group leaders elbowing you out of the way, but I still had a great time chilling, walking around and just enjoying seeing something so impressive. What a loser. Wow. They did make Liliana wear a sort of sarong type thing, which I always find a bit over the top. 
Surely the big G.O.D. would be more annoyed that you basically monetized the place you built to worship him over some bare legs. But hey, here we are. We were super pleased to get a photo of us both together, quite a rare occurrence over the six months. And unless you're amazing at doing self-timers, it's pretty difficult to get anything other than a selfie. I also love the frescoes too, especially ones where all the priests are being martyred or killed or whatever you want to call it. Like getting heads chopped off, being boiled, being ripped in half, being set on fire, all that good stuff. Not because I'm into gore, but because their expressions are like, yeah, so what? Think I care? Fuck off and hurry up. Am I dead yet? This is taking ages. After a day of sightseeing, we lazily walked down to the bottom, grabbed a beer along the way, and then had a good barbecue meal at the campsite. So, what is Meteora? It's just a big bunch of monasteries built awkwardly, but that's what makes it really special and so 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 worth checking out if you are ever in Greece in this part. I think that there's a pretty direct line from Athens to get here and there's a big new motorway so it is pretty accessible. Definitely something I would check out again. We were only a couple of days away from the east coast Airbnb that we'd booked so the next day we set out buzzing to get to the beach and just to have a week doing hee-haw. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure to leave me a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And so you don't miss next week's episode, don't forget to subscribe. And on that, I recently hit over 300 subs, which for me is a big achievement. So a big massive thank you to everyone who's already subscribed. And if you haven't already, then what the hell is your problem? Hmm?